Rice is the foremost staple in the Chinese diet today. But this was not always the case. This domesticated crop, which first appeared in what is now Southeast China, struggled to break new ground over thousands of years. In Northern China, it had to compete with the strong native crop millet and very fertile wheat from Western Asia. Rice also sailed across the ocean, following humans to remote islands, where, incredibly, it took root and thrived. Over the following thousand years, rice cultivation developed, Through the past and present, the culture of China, Asia's largest country, has spread beyond geography and ethnicity. Ten centuries ago, as the northerners of the Yellow River Basin migrated southward, so did the economic center of the country, providing new opportunities for rice to expand its reach. The story of rice was on the move, as China was about to change dramatically from north to south. In winter, the small towns of Jiangnan, south of the Yangtze River, are quiet and peaceful. Little bridges, flowing water, and cozy homes are three essential elements of China's countryside life, recurring in various poems and literary works. Add exquisite gardens to this gentle scene, and you have the picture of idyllic life in the minds of many people. You may not believe that without rice, all of this could have been very different. Our story today begins here. Wei Bing Nin, a native of Shaoxing, is a winemaker at the town's winery. Nearly 40 years of experience have made him a master of his craft. Glutinous rice is a type of rice that originated south of the Yangtze River in China. It is highly valued throughout Southern Asia. 
。像糯米跟一般的稻米呢，它差别就是一个基因的差别。我们那个基因在英文上叫 wax 基因，这个基因，你有了这个基因，你这个就变成糯稻了；没有这个基因，你就变成普通的大米了。The Zhuang people turn glutinous rice into colorful foods to celebrate the harvest. The Dong people use it to make sour fish. It is uncommon to mix staple food with other ingredients. Acidic foods are easy to preserve, a legacy of past eras when food was less plentiful. Along the Mekong River, which winds through China and Southeast Asia, glutinous rice is a staple food. Thai fragrant rice is famous all over the world, but people in its country of origin prefer glutinous rice. In terms of global rice consumption, glutinous rice doesn't count for much, but many people appreciate it because of its sweet, pleasant quality. Shaoxing yellow wine has a long-standing reputation in Asia. Like the scenery in southern China, this golden drink is warm and gentle, but goes straight to the heart. It is made from glutinous rice. This rice, combined with water from Jianhu Lake, produces a wine worthy of poetry. At the winter solstice, premium glutinous rice is soaked in water from Jianhu Lake. After it swells up, it is steamed. Every few hours, Wei Binglin checks the temperature. When the rice wine begins to ferment, its temperature rises, which is the key in making yellow wine. Before thermometers were common, the winemaker's experience was crucial. Glutinous rice has a high amylopectin content of 99% to 100% and is easy to shape. Many glutinous rice cakes are made in the south. In ancient China, people even mixed glutinous rice paste with clay to build houses, which were exceptionally strong. Today in Shaoxing, Large quantities of glutinous rice are used every day for the purpose of making yellow wine. Many skilled winemakers repeat the ancient process their ancestors followed, providing a constant supply of yellow wine to the world. Making wine from grain is the privilege of a prosperous society where food is abundant. In 1959, archaeologists unearthed the Majabong ruins in Jiaxing, which dates back more than 60 centuries. 
Traces of rice found at the site prove that the ancient people around Zhuajian started primitive rice farming at least 6,000 years ago. Nanfasuila 这个是古代的农业社会。这个是古代的农业社会。这个是古代的农业社会。这个是古代的农业社会。这个是古代的农业社会。这个是古代的农业社会。这个是古代的农业社会。这个是古代的农业社会。这个是古代的农业社会。这
even if the southern Song dynasty had lost half its land, its noble families could still prosper and thrive in Jiangnan, as the elegant culture of the Song people was based on abundant rice stores and vigorous economic activity. If the northerners hadn't fled and settled in the south, we might not have known such exquisite beauty. Without a surplus of grain, wonderful wines would not have been produced. If there were no yellow wine in their cups, could the poets have described the beauty of Jiangnan in their subtle and moving words? The Song Dynasty had developed highly effective techniques of rice cultivation. Intensive farming dramatically increased the yield and quality of rice in Jiangnan. It not only met local consumption, but also could supply other areas in China. Some experts have deduced that the Song Dynasty was the most economically developed period in ancient China. As a byproduct of rice farming, incense became very popular among the nobility, government officials, and prestigious scholars. Burning incense was an aristocratic tradition in ancient China and was highly developed in the affluent Song Dynasty. It is said that during the Northern Song Dynasty, an incense workshop was even set up in the Imperial Palace. Today, Ouyang Wendong pounds glutinous rice into powder to restore a scent that dates back about a thousand years. After multiple ingredients are mixed, the glutinous rice tightly binds the powder. It then takes 10 hours for them to dry. When exposed to high temperatures, the dried mixture lasts for a long time with a persistent fragrance. We don't know if Ouyang Wendong's attempt to recover the aroma of incense in the Song Dynasty is successful, as no one knows its real scent from a thousand years ago, but the process is fascinating. The purpose of burning incense is to appreciate its pleasant fragrance. It's part of a ritual that includes observation, touch, and smell to grasp an experience that drifts away in an instant and to perceive the infinite spiritual world in a tangible space. Such pursuit of illusory satisfaction could only occur when food is abundant but the richer they are, the more vulnerable people are to any misfortune. In 1012, there was a drought in the south. This was a serious problem in an area where rice was the staple food. People were at a loss. 
Then, in Fujian province, someone discovered a humble crop called champa rice that could save the situation. Thousands of years ago, the Bai Yue tribes, living in what is now southern China, planted rice all over Southeast Asia, including what is now Vietnam. Who would have expected that these rice varieties, after local planting, adaptation and evolution, would become drought resistant, tolerant of poor soil, and especially suitable for cultivation in mountainous areas? And after many centuries, these rice seeds would return to China under a new local name. Quanzhou in Fujian province was once known as the largest port in the east. A thousand years ago, multitudes of merchants from Arab and Asian countries gathered here to ship Chinese porcelain, tea, silk, and other commodities all over the world. The Ashab Mosque, initially built in 1009, has witnessed countless interactions between Chinese and foreign civilizations. Historically, due to the scarcity of arable land in Fujian, many farmers crossed the sea to make a living in foreign lands. A large proportion of the world's overseas Chinese today are of Fujian ancestry. Experts guess that aboard some of the ships, there might have been merchants from Vietnam who could have been descendants of Fujian farmers. Knowing the harsh conditions of their native land, they could have brought champa rice seeds to Fujian and planted them in the rolling hills. As for the drought of 1012, the problem was readily solved when officials were made aware of the champa rice in the mountainous areas of Fujian. This painting is called Along the River During the Qingming Festival and is a masterpiece by Zhang Zuoduan, a painter in the Northern Song Dynasty. It depicts the prosperous city of Dongjing, which is now Kaifeng in Henan Province. As the capital of Northern Song, Dongjing was one of the largest and most bustling cities in the world at the time, with a population of up to one million. The Bianhe River in Dongjing was a major commercial thoroughfare and water transport hub. The painting shows boats laden with rice from Jiangnan to meet the demand of the capital. This artwork is by Lo Shu, the magistrate of Yuqian County in Zhejiang during the Southern Song Dynasty. It shows the processes of farming and weaving in a series of pictures. It depicts a 21-step process of rice cultivation, which vividly demonstrates the advanced rice agriculture in Jiangnan at the time. <laughs>
The Vietnamese rice seeds, carrying the genes of Chinese rice, advanced rice cultivation and supported the rapid economic development of the Song Dynasty. This is an early example of the significance of the interaction and mingling of civilizations. It made China the most prosperous country in the world during the Song Dynasty. Neo-Confucianism emerged during the Song Dynasty with famous scholars in every generation. Scientific and technological progress were also unprecedented during this time. For example, movable type printing, the compass, and gunpowder, three of China's famous four great inventions, were created in the Song Dynasty. Foreign relations also flourished, with a thriving sea trade exporting Chinese porcelain, silk, and tea all over the world. Strong economic power created a prosperous commercial civilization and urban lifestyle. Once the economy takes off, all details of life change. Above is heaven, below are Suzhou and Hangzhou. In China, the word Suzhou is a metaphor for prosperity and beauty. In Chinese tradition, the soft Suzhou dialect, small bridges across flowing water, and white walls under black tiled roofs represent the ideal life. Today, in the tasty dim sum made of rice, we can see traces of this ideal life carried forward since the Song Dynasty. Apply a layer of pumpkin juice to the glutinous rice cake, then decorate it with green and red shredded turnip to make a fairy cake. Put black sesame and red bean paste inside a rice ball to make a sweet, glutinous, double-filling dumpling. Mix chopped walnuts, pumpkin seeds, and glutinous rice flour together. Then steam it with red yeast rice to produce a tutti-frutti honey cake. The fine food in Suzhou derives from the skillful rice farming and economic development of the area since the Tang and Song dynasties. Suzhou, 那文人文化也特别发达 Coincidentally, Japan, which inherited many customs of the Tang and Song dynasties, became even more obsessed with fine rice. Built in the 8th century, the Inari Shrine in Kyoto honors the god of rice, who blesses the Japanese with a good rice harvest and prosperous business.
During the Northern Song Dynasty, Japanese monk Esai brought Chinese tea to Japan. Later, Japanese tea ceremony had been developed. While absorbing foreign cultures, the gentle and cultivated Song people quietly spread Chinese civilization and culture abroad. After 150 years of peace and social stability, despite its advanced economy and culture, the Southern Song Dynasty was unable to resist the mighty and powerful Mongol army. China entered the Yuan Dynasty, and its political center moved to the north once again. Hua Daixin grew up by the Grand Canal, which runs through his native city of Jining in Shandong province. His family came here about 200 years ago to help manage the canal and ensure the safe transportation of rice. We can't imagine how important rice was at the time. But if we take a moment to relive history, we can get a sense of it. About 700 years ago, during the Yuan Dynasty, roughly 60,000 tons of rice per year were transported through here to today's Beijing. The imperial court organized large shipments of rice to the north, which not only strengthened the dynasty, but also influenced the dietary habits in the northern regions. These cormorants work tirelessly. The fish they catch will be eaten in one way, fresh or another, dried. It's not clear whether Emperor Xianlong would confirm what Mr. Ma said. Iron pot fish stew with pastry cakes is a common folk dish in northern China. The difference here is that these cakes are not made of cornmeal or wheat flour popular in Shandong, but of rice. Also, they are cooked over rice straw. Rice has been grown in Shandong since ancient times, but due to geographical constraints, its yield has never been as high as that of wheat. The Grand Canal, dug seven centuries ago to connect the north and south of China, made Jinning an affluent gathering place, a hotspot for merchants, and a north-south artery running day and night. The word bung refers to a shallow pot from the south. Today, bung stewed pork and rice is a famous dish in the northern city of Jining.
It consists of marinated pork belly, cooked with gluten, eggs, and other ingredients in a southern-style bung, while rice is cooked in another bung. The dish was the essential food for boatmen as they sailed from south to north. The boatmen brought pots and rice from their southern hometowns. Many years later, the boatmen and the busy docks are long gone, but this carry-on cooking tool, along with the food they invented, were handed down to us today. The political center of the Yuan dynasty was today's Beijing, and the transport of grain by water was critical for the north. Therefore, the Yuan dynasty rerouted the Grand Canal to strengthen its control over Jiangnan. The canal is no longer detoured through Luoyang, but went directly to Beijing via Jinning from Hangzhou. Every year, the Yuan government brought rice through six southern routes to Yangzhou and then transported it to the vast areas of northern China through the Grand Canal. By that time, shipbuilding and navigation had advanced greatly, especially the use of the compass, which was necessary for marine shipping. To mitigate the drawbacks of canal shipping and to ensure the supply of rice to the capital and northern regions, the Yuan dynasty opened a sea route for rice. Rice produced in the south was shipped from the port of Liujiagang to Tianjin through the East Sea, Yellow Sea, and Bohai Sea, and then from Tianjin to the Yuan capital, today's Beijing, by inland waterway. The abundant rice and rich resources of Jiangnan were constantly shipped to the Yuan political center. While the Jiangnan boatmen continued to transport boatloads of rice to Beijing, things were changing quietly on the Taihu Plain, where rice cultivation was most advanced. Even with plenty of options today, industrial shifts can have a major impact on a region. For a society that relied heavily on rice farming centuries ago, a shift in production priorities could have disastrous consequences. But an undercurrent of change was already surging. As the economy grew and populations migrated, China's rice production expanded from the Taihu Plain to the plains of Jianghan, Dongtin Lake, and Poyang Lake, as well as the Fujian Coast and Pearl River Delta. During the Ming and Qing dynasties, other crops, including corn, sweet potatoes, and peanuts, were introduced into China from distant America. This is the 
发生了很大的变化。明朝以前，中国有很多的大山，秦岭、大巴山，很多的，福建的很多深山，这个人杰稀少，深山，没有人进去。到了玉米番薯进来以后，不得了啊，大批流民往山上去。那么这些人呢，国家没有户口的呀、啊，对不对？哎，流民啊，国家就怕这些人造反。就给他们很多优惠政策，在这里设置了很多郡县，管理这个。After centuries of development, rice crops occupied most of the good farmland in the country and had become the absolute staple food of the Chinese. Meanwhile, the crops imported from America. Allowed maximum use of land where rice could not survive, and supplemented any rice shortages. For the first time in ancient China, the people had access to a wide range of food sources. So, then, to the Ming Qing era, the population started to increase. After the Qing Dynasty, to the Qing Dynasty, 四万万五千万同胞。The abundance of food led to population growth, which in turn contributed to the development of farmland, and more and more lands were utilized. The agricultural potential of northeastern China, however, had largely been overlooked. Its landscapes were fascinating. But seemed difficult to cultivate, and the climate was cold. Also, the Qing Dynasty had closed off many parts of northeastern China, limiting the region's agricultural development. But there are always exceptions to everything. Facing the red, yellow, and blue landscape, who would believe this is one of the main rice-producing areas in China? Today, Pan Jin's rice fields not only yield premium rice, but also present the most beautiful seaside pastoral view. Who would imagine that just over 100 years ago there were very few people here? Every spring, large-scale ceremonies are held around the city to celebrate the planting of rice seedlings. This festival is so joyous because everything these people have was hard won. Li Chengmin and his wife manage about 130 hectares of rice fields, which is not uncommon today. Pan Jin rice is nationally famous, but what is less known is that the productive paddy fields and excellent rice here are the results of the local people's persistent and determined effort. In 1928, local ruler Zhang Shuiliang founded the Ying Tian Rice Company. He mobilized local people to plant rice on wasteland left by retreating seas, using water from the Liao Hua River for irrigation. Incredibly, mud flats left behind by the sea were turned into one of the largest rice growing areas in China, with the most advanced production technology of the time. Real 
作物农业在东北地区大规模种植是近现代的事呃，这个大豆与高粱，这个这个唱歌都能听得出来了，是吧？我们正种植的主要是大豆啊、高粱啊，后来有玉米、马铃薯啊，这些呢实际是东北地区主要的农作物。In an area that had been closed for more than 200 years, generations of Chinese people reclaimed and cultivated the land to create a vibrant economy based on rice. Today, the three provinces of Liaoning, Jilin, and Heilongjiang in northeast China rank among the world's top quality rice growing areas. As the main crop in ancient China, rice stimulated the development of agriculture and trade turning southern China into an affluent land. This prompted the advancement of culture and education in Jiangnan, which produced talented people who served at all levels of government. After the Song Dynasty, officials from the south tried every means to introduce rice to the north, as exemplified by the stories of Xi Guanqi and Wang Yingjiao, who pioneered growing Xiaojian rice in Tianjin during the Ming Dynasty. From the south to the north and back again, the spread of rice in China has almost always followed the country's political and economic centers. And throughout its long history, this crop has been closely linked to the fate of the Chinese people. <laughs>